Okay, uh, Elia, can, can, you can hear us? Yes. Good, we can hear you now too. Okay, so uh, we thought the plane movement was negative. Here's the uh, about 0.2 tests left MR. Right, so we see edema in the lunate. We see widening of the scaphalunate interval, the regularity of that scaphalunate ligament. Great. And there's a stir. Yep, similar findings, edema, uh, defect in that ligament. Right. John, were you going to say something? I, I, no, I, I, the, the separation between the scaphalunate, that, that's... Right. Obvious trauma. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, uh, so this is kind of a diffuse trabecular bone injury of the lunate. The cortical margins are intact. This is associated with the scaphalunate ligament tear. So I agree with John. This was a, a traumatic, traumatic injury. Uh, so. Uh, All right, so on our T1, I really don't, or the, the stir image, I really don't see the lunate. There's negative ulnar variance. I wonder if it's been dislocated. It could be dislocated, though. It looks like we may have a little something here on the stirs, but if we go to the sagittal images, this is what we have. Okay, we have a fracture through the mid yeah, portion right. of the. So lunate. this is a fracture in the coronal plane with uh, displacement of the volar and dorsal fragments. Fracture dislocation. Wait. Okay. Danny? Eight. Um, again, we see the lunate kind of edematous and change in morphology. Right, um, it looks like it's kind of flattened. Diffuse loss of fat signal within it. So uh, AVN versus trauma. Okay, and then this is, well, for a long time, it was called post-traumatic AVN or, or AVN. Uh, and the classic, we'll, we'll talk about it in a little bit, the classic uh, description of this kind of lunate disease uh, has for years assumed that these were infarcts due to disruption, uh, traumatic disruption of the vascular supply to the lunate. And that's still what's really in all of the hand surgery books and so forth. Uh, I think now the data is pretty clear by MR is that these are various forms of usually repetitive trauma, trabecular injuries, and eventual collapse of the lunate. Uh, I, I really don't think that there's good evidence that it's really due to vascular disruption, though that's still the, the standard theory. I think it's really due to trauma typically seen in jackhammer people, uh, carpenters who do a lot of hammering and so forth, uh, where they would get uh, repetitive trauma. Uh, I have not seen any of these that have really looked like classic double line sign AVN. Uh, and it really fits more with uh, the clinical history of these people being in, uh, typically in occupations where they have repetitive trauma. And it fits better with all the other uh, our understanding of traumatic injuries to other bones that we've seen in the foot and ankle and the knee and, and elsewhere. Uh, it's just before MR, uh, with just plain x-rays to do evaluations, uh, we, we really couldn't look at the pathophysiology in a, in a fine way. Now we can, we can see the progression much better. Okay. Hey, um, uh, Robert. Uh, Robert. are supplied to the lunate. Um, there are three t different types of um, risks. Um, one, one supply is uh, two vessels that usually uh, holds up okay with trauma. Then the other two uh, is a Y, and, and, uh, and then uh, that's a single vessel from uh, entering the uh, lunate and then it splits into a white shape and that's not very good for circulation and then the third one is a single vessel 
So the double vessel is the, the good one. So you, you 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 usually don't get gain box, but the other two are are not so good. So uh, anatomic vessels it, 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 um, kind of push it pushes you towards the vascularity problem. Okay, so we have an axial of the wrist, and it looks like the ulna is looks like it's perched on that radius anteriorly. There, there's a lot of surrounding soft tissue edema. I think we lost you again, Dr. Reeves. I hear you, Robert, but I don't hear anybody else. Same here. It seems like the biggest problem we have is with sound. Um, can you hear me, John? Because uh, I don't hear you. Well, I mean. Can you hear us now, John? Uh, yes, I can. Yes. Oh. Uh, could you? Yeah. Okay. You can hear us now. Yes. Okay. Yep. All righty. Uh, well, I'm sorry about these technical problems. Okay. Uh, Elio, are you next? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so we see fractures along the distal radial ulnar joint with uh, a fusion surrounding soft tissue edema. Yeah, good. Okay. And then here's an old one uh, that's kind of fixed deformity. At this point, it's very hard to, to treat these. Uh, this is five months old, and you can see the chronic deformity and degenerative disease. And this patient was unable to uh, uh, twist the wrist. Okay. All right. Looks like at that uh, set third metacarpal head, there's diffuse yeah. edema. So he's hit by a pitch, and oh. that's that's a tr acute trabecular bone injury. Uh, from a compression injury. And then this was a kid who was injured by skateboarding when they fell on the wrist. Okay. So this was an adult who was rollerblading on the beach in Santa Barbara on the Let's bike see. path and fell and hit the dorsal aspect of the wrist on the pavement. Um, okay, so this one, yeah, maybe in retrospect, a little something here, but basically these were read as negative. Okay. We got an MR scan, and this is what it showed. Okay, so on the, you see linear edema, mm -hmm. In the distal. Yeah, so, so this is basically non displaced trabecular, displaced trabecular fractures. The, what was interesting about this particular case is this individual had suffered for about four months with uh, with tennis elbow. Uh, with this, the wrist was put in a splint, and within about a week, the wrist pain got better and the tennis elbow was cured. And uh, this was me. I was rollerblading with my. Uh -huh my four-year-old daughter at the time. Uh, and that, that made me start thinking about 
the fact that where you really put strain on the common extensor tendon is when, when you use the wrist and extend the wrist by putting it in a, in a, in a brace so that I couldn't really use the wrist. It actually stopped the, the stretching on the common extensor tendon origin and allowed it to heal. So, uh, and I talked to a number of people since who've had tennis elbow and these wrist splints actually seem to be pretty effective treatment for tennis elbow. Well, a little more force, I you would really be in trouble. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, and then uh, I could talk about distal radial fractures. This is kind of a description of the normal appearance of the lunate with respect to the radius with about 15 degrees of boulder angulation of the distal radius. A Collie's fracture is where you have a transverse fracture of the distal radius with dorsal displacement. A Smith fracture is a transverse fracture of the distal radius with boulder displacement. A Barton's fracture is where the fracture extends into the joint space. And a dorsal volar and a volar Barton's fracture is where the fracture extends into the joint space uh, volarly. And notice you get some displacement when you get the Bar Barton's fractures. The important thing here is most Collie's fractures are treated conservatively. Uh, Barton's fractures are generally surgical conditions. Yeah, Smith, Smith and, and Barton's are usually treated as surgically. Yeah, so the, the degree of displacement uh, is important. Uh, with the Collie's fractures, you usually brace them or put them in a in a uh, in a cast with uh, uh, volar flexion of the wrist. Okay. So who's next? Is it Robert? Robert, what do you think of this case? Oh no! Don't tell me it's not working again. Sorry. No, that's me. Oh, Mike. good. Okay. Here it looks like there's a transverse fracture through the distal radius and then some uh, dorsal tilt of the lunate. Okay. Fair right. there. See all this edema here. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the sagittal yeah. images, we really don't see much displacement here. So this is put in the category. It does not extend to the, to the joint space. So this would be in the category of a Collie's fracture. Okay. Elior. Right, so here, um, hmm. fracture at the base of the uh, radial styloid. Right. Yeah. So this doesn't quite fit the other groups, but this would be an interarticular radial styloid fracture. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of displacement here on the sagittal images. John, how would you treat this? Uh, I'd put the patient in this splint and, and or cast depending on whether i trust the patient or not okay Great. okay all right uh, do we have a pressure at that volar aspect of the distal radius there okay so uh or yeah if you look here th this is it's, it, this one was angled in an uh, odd way so yeah. we're actually getting out of the it wasn't in the true coronal plane of the wrist so that's that's confusing uh but here we can see a fracture going into the joint space so this is involves more the the entire distal radius, so this would be a Barton's type fracture, uh, which is typically uh, uh, surgical. And then here's a CT scan showing the, the fracture, where you can see the complex fracture. Here's a transverse as well as a, a vertical component going into the joint space. John? Yeah, well, if your um, jo joint is uh, not dorsally angulated, uh, your function of the 
uh, rest uh, is, is uh, very poor. Um, so with Collie's fracture, uh, the joint is uh, dorsally angulated and uh, you can actually not treat Collie's fracture and um, do just fine. Uh, it may not look pretty, but the function will be good. But you put the wrist in a volar uh, angulation and uh, you lose function. Uh, there's uh, the, you lose a lot of strength. Okay. So, uh, colleagues, uh, th th we did a study in Detroit years and years ago. We picked up 200 individuals from the skid row and uh, had them x rayed. And uh, out of 200, there were probably 100 or so with colleagues' fractures that were not treated. And uh, almost all of them were functioning uh, as well as uh, one extremity as well as the other. Uh, so uh, colleagues can be not treated or treated, but, but uh, when it comes to women, uh, you better treat it and treat it, treat it very nicely. Uh, otherwise, you'll get uh, a, a lawyer on your back. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's not, a, it's not so much the function uh, as it is the looks. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. Look, 53-year-old female, pain six weeks after injury. Uh, looks like we have a transverse fracture of the distal radius. Um, with a oh, and then uh, is there a little edema within the lunate as well? well but the, the main thing here is that this involves a joint space. Oh, with okay, so it's extending to the joint space with displacement and incongruity of the subchondral bone. So, so this is a high risk lesion and is a surgical lesion. Okay, Robert. All right, here it looks like there's a lot of edema and, uh, within the uh, trapezoid bone. So I'd be yeah. concerned about you know, injury there. And there's also a lot of cystic change in the proximal lunate and distal ulna. So we'll talk about ulnar abutment. Uh, okay. probably in the next lecture. So that's just a trabecular bone injury of the uh, trapezoid. And then here we can see other, other fractures here. That, that, that usually uh, heals uh, with immobilization, uh, doesn't need surgical stuff. Good, great. This was uh, this baseball player was leading Major League Baseball. He was the lead, uh, batting leader and develop acute wrist pain after checking a, squ uh, a swing. Uh, Elior, what do you think is going on here? Okay, so here there's regularity of the, I think we're, I think that's lateral. So that's going to be the. This is the hammer. Uh, I mean. Oh, the handmate. Okay, so there's there's a fracture of the hook. Yeah. So, and here, if you see, it's probably an incomplete fracture, and and this is a probably the most frequently frequent fracture of the wrist in uh, baseball players, and it typically occurs with batting when the uh, the bat uh, impacts the uh, handmate, uh, the hook of the handmate. And here we can see that there's probably repetitive trauma with sclerosis around here and an, and an incomplete fracture. Uh, and with him, what, what probably happened is that he uh, got a diffuse trabecular bone injury involving the, the, the hook of the hamate and the hamate itself. Uh, uh, but that was acute superimposed upon chronic injury uh, in him. Okay. This is left wrist. All right, so here it looks like there's edema within the hamate. Okay, 
probably a little trying of fiber cartilage uh, separation. And here you can see where the skin marker is. Yeah. Um, yeah, diffuse edema throughout the hamay and looks like a fracture through the base. Yeah. So this was an acute fracture of the base of the hook of the hamate uh, uh, from batic practice. So why don't we stop here and we'll move on to other traumatic injuries tomorrow. Okay? Okay. Any questions? Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening, everybody. You too. Stay safe.